Today we're going to talk about providing unique feedback for each drag in your drag and drops. Okay, so um, what we're going to do today is we're going to take advantage of a feature called object actions that's built into drag and drops so that you can provide something more than just the generic try again message or failure caption or for that matter success caption for your drag and drop interactions. Here's my instructions for this particular interaction. Once the learner has read these instructions, they really don't need them anymore. So I'm actually going to reuse those and uh, have them be all of the different captions through the use of multi-state objects. So I've got all my incorrect captions plus all my correct captions when they get one of those drag and drops correct. And of course, all of these are labeled appropriately. It's very important when you're doing uh, any kind of advanced interaction that you label all of your objects correctly. It's more than just a good practice. I think it's a requirement. Similarly, all my coins are labeled uh, by the denomination of the coin. So drag 05, drag 25, and so on. And my drop targets, same thing. Uh, drop 01, drop 05, so it's easy to identify what they all are. Once the learner has actually got the entire interaction correct, I have another caption which is currently transparent, and through the use of multi-state objects, I have a completed state where it says, congratulations, you've completed this activity, and of course, then they can click the right arrow to continue. So let's start to build this interaction. I'm not going to use the traditional one, two, three step drag and drop wizard that's included in your interactions icon on the toolbar. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the drag and drop window, which is available from the window dropdown, and do it the more manual method, just so that you can see what that process looks like. First thing I need to do is click the plus icon. That's gonna add a submit button to my slide. I'm gonna auto submit this particular interaction so I won't need this. I'm just gonna drag it down below in my scrap area there so it's out of the way. The first thing I need to do is identify all of my drag sources. So I'm gonna select the coins one by one and mark them as drag sources. And you'll recognize this because they'll have a green outline around each of them once you've done that. And we're gonna do the same thing for our drop targets. One by one, I'm gonna select those and identify those as drop targets. Now there is an easy way to mark your correct answers, your drag and drops with the appropriate uh, relationship with one another. Uh, you can do so just by using this little icon in the middle of the drag source and you can drag that over to the appropriate drop target. Now, I've done the first one here, but there's actually another way you can do this. If you go to your drag and drop panel, go to the options tab, you'll see there's set correct answers. And this again would be the more manual way to do it. I'm gonna need an extra row, so I'm gonna add a new row here. Uh, again, I've already got drop five with drag five, and you can see here clearly why uh, labeling your objects is so important. So I'm gonna match up drop 10 with drag 10, drop zero one, with drag one, and finally drop 25 with drag 25. So that's good. I can click OK at this point, and you'll see all the rest of my relationships have been added there. While we're on the options page, though, I'm going to draw your attention to this redrag the dropped source item. Uh, I would recommend this. This would allow your learners to drag an object that they accidentally dragged to one of those drop targets to another drop target. So check that while you're here. And looking at the uh, actions tab, there's a couple things I'm gonna do here as well. I'm gonna go ahead and select auto submit correct answers because I want this to automatically submit when they've got the right combination. 
I'm not using the built-in failure or success caption, so we're going to turn those off. But I am going to give them infinite attempts, so I'll keep letting them try until they get it correct. Now, once they've got it correct, remember I've got that transparent final feedback caption down below. I'm going to actually, uh, through the on success action of this interaction, uh, change the state of that object to let the learners know that they've got the overall interaction completed. And I'm going to uncheck continue playing the project because again, they've got back and next buttons they can navigate as they see fit. The last thing I need to do to make this all work is I need to select my drop targets and do a couple of things to those. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the coins a little bit because I think they might not all fit within that space. So I'm going to shrink the coins by setting the size to 75% of its normal size here. And now one by one, we're going to set up some object actions for each of the drop targets. So starting with uh, one cent, I'm going to click on object actions. And I need to uncheck accept all because I want only one coin per drop target. And if there's a coin already there, I want it to replace the coin that's already there. So we're going to change this to replace. This is for the one cent drop target. So I'm going to start with drag 01 just so I can keep it straight in my head. Even though they're all labeled correctly, uh, obviously this many different uh, actions can get a little confusing. So uh, drag 01 is correct. So we're going to change the state of our instruction and immediate feedback item to correct 01. I'm going to uncheck continue playing the project and click OK. The rest of these are incorrect answers. So we're going to change the state of our instruction and immediate feedback to incorrect, in this case 05. Uncheck continue playing the project. Change the state of the next item which is drag 25 to incorrect 25 and the last one is for the 10 cent piece so we'll change the state of our feedback to incorrect 10 cents uncheck continue playing the project click OK and this first one is now done let's do the 5 cent one next object actions don't forget to unselect accept all and set up the coins to replace any existing coins. Uh, this is five cents, so we're going to do with uh, use correct zero five for the caption. So change state to correct zero five. The rest are incorrect, so we'll change the state to incorrect twenty five. Change the state of incorrect 01 and change the state of into incorrect zero or uh, 10. Sorry, that one's done. The third one, which is our 10 cent drop target. So we'll go ahead and set up drag 10 to be the correct feedback. Change state uh, to correct, uh, correct 10. Uncheck continue playing project. Rest of these will be incorrect. Change state to incorrect 05. Change state to incorrect 25. Change state to incorrect 01. Uncheck continue playing the project. Third one's done. Let's get the last and final drop target. Again, don't forget to set it up to replace the coin. Uh, in this case here, it's 25. So that's our correct caption. And it's already selected for us. And we'll choose the remaining distractor drag and drops here to incorrect 05, change state to incorrect 01, 
And the last one here, change state to incorrect dime. Okay, I think we're good to go. I think we've done everything that we need to do to make this interaction work. Let's preview in HTML5. All right, so here we go. Let's try getting a wrong answer first. I'll drag this nickel over to the one cent drop target. No, that was a five cent coin, sometimes called a nickel. Try again. Let's do the one cent coin instead. Correct, that was the one cent coin. And now we can put the dime in the five cent. Nope, that's not right. Let's get this correct this time. And the dime goes here. And the quarter goes down here. And congratulations, you've now completed this activity. Click the right arrow to continue. And of course, all along we got our correct and incorrect feedback for each drag and drop. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.